now I want to show you some of the, the really awesome management features here available in the software. So uh, as this is a cluster enabled environment, I've actually added this EMEA web server to the cluster. It's telling me that by the uh, reddish or, or purple color there. And that's a simple process. For instance, this NAM SQL server is on, as I know by uh, the, the blue state that it depicts here. Um, I'll come into this machine, click add it to the cluster, simple point and click. It's going to add that uh, SQL server there to the cluster as well. Um, with my, you know, we'll, we'll kind of switch up the scenario here and uh, go go a little di different direction here. Let's say this actually was a traditional DR site here and not my uh, Asia Pacific uh, data center. I would be able to um, run replications of this web server to my DR site um, and, and I'm going to walk you through that process. So if I select the machine and, and select replicate, um, it's going to walk me through a, a very simple and straightforward uh, wizard here to not only you know create that replication, but schedule and, and determine how I want to send those uh, initial replications. And uh, you know, at that point, with the replication in place, I'd be able to do things like execute a, a failover or a planned failover. So um, you know, getting into that DR business continuity uh, model mindset of a highly available infrastructure. So first option, I'm going to select where I want to replicate and I'm going to select that DR host, which resides in my DR uh, site. I have some options for, for you know, renaming the replica server or choosing the, uh, the port or authentication type. I'm going to leave that all standard. I have the ability to replicate all the virtual hard disks of the machine. Or I can actually, uh, if I had multiple hard disks existing on this web server, I could pick and choose specific ones and, and only replicate those, uh, those, those hard disks. So I'll run the full replication for the example. I can choose the frequency of which to send those replications every 30 seconds to every 15 minutes. Um, I can schedule uh, precisely when I want to send those so I can run it manually. Um, I can create a, a schedule and, and, you know, with the understanding that some of these virtual machines could be, could be pretty large in size, there may, maybe is some concern sending these, these replications over your production network, specifically during business hours. So I can create this schedule that says, you know, only send those, uh, and those replications 6.30 PM to 6.00 AM. Um, and it's going to keep your, your production network running at that peak performance and, uh, especially during business hours. The other option I have is to actually uh, attach that replication to an external media. Um, you know, quite frankly, I could, uh, you know, pull that replication onto my external media, get in my car, drive over to my DR site, and upload my initial replication that way. Um, in the scenario we're utilizing today, probably not the most efficient uh, thing to do driving from uh, London to China, <laughs> or even possible. But you know, you can you can again. And use your imagination there. Um, I'll go ahead and, and just run this uh, example over the network here. So I'll finish that process up and you'll see my, my EMEA web server here is going to stay up and running. I'm going to spin up a web server, uh, sorry not spin up, but I, I'm going to have a web server appear in my DR site here uh, basically in a standby mode. So it, it'll be um, you know in that standby mode, ready to for for a failover or a, a planned failover. Um, so we're going to give that a second to complete. It looks like it did complete. Um, so once that machine appears, we would uh, you know be able to to get into that that failover uh, potential there. So I mentioned the data stores tab briefly uh, a little bit earlier, and uh, you know. This is this is the view you're you're going to see here. So I can create those local file storages, those uh, network file shares, or, or my cluster shared volumes. I can get into things like um, creating template libraries to help automate the the process of VM creation. So I could uh, you know build out this template library. I could come into Hyper V Management, and uh, I could say, all right, create a VM. And uh, you'll see right away, I, I can create a new virtual machine or a virtual machine from a template. If I select the template option, I, I then uh, access that data store, which is pointing to my, my template library, and, and uh, I can go from there. In addition to uh, you know creating VMs from template, 
Um, a very relevant feature here might be the cloning option as, as we may need to deploy you know, virtual machines with identical uh, feature sets um, throughout, you know, let's say, you know, and, and we needed to deploy 20 of these and, and I could just utilize the clone option, uh, set the number of clones I want to create and, and spin those machines up and, and, you know, really save yourself a lot of time and headache there on the VM creation side. So uh, things like cloning and templates are, are going to be very relevant to these, um, you know, spread out or, or distributed uh you know, architectures here that, that um, you know, could eat up a lot of your time going from, from machine to machine and creating machines and, and then, you know, managing monitoring, uh, you know, post uh, creation. All right, so our replications are being sent. I can tell here as it uh, shows me the little R on my EMEA web server now, that now resides in my DR site. So uh, I'll walk you through the process of a planned failover. And, and in the event of a planned failover, you would power this machine down. So um, you know, this is a scenario where maybe you need to take this VM down for some uh, upgrades or, or maintenance and, uh, you know, it, it's all planned. So I'd come in and, and turn this machine off. Once it's off, I can come in and, and start executing that plan failover. So um, before I do execute a, a production failover, I have the option to, uh, you know, set up test failovers here in the software. And, and once that testing is complete, um, you can actually just point and click to to clean that up and remove those test failovers as well. I can view the replication health, so you know the number of uh, replication attempts and and uh, the number of replications received. So I can keep an eye on that. Uh, I mentioned the plan failover here, so I'll go ahead. You'll see simple point and click option here. And a really neat feature is that as I execute this failover. It's going to reverse the direction uh, after the failover. So as my EMEA web server spins up and, and is now functioning as my production uh, VM in the scenario, it's going to begin replicating back to my original uh, web server. So go ahead, select failover, and uh, you'll see that this machine will automatically spin up for me and, and it will begin uh, sending those replications back to its original location. Another feature that, that ties into the you know, business continuity or high availability of your infrastructure is the live migration feature. So similar to what we, we just hit on with uh, the replications, you know, I can take it to a, a Hyper-V host level and say, you know, I need to do some of that maintenance or upgrading on, on my North America Hyper-V host. So what I want to do is you know, live migrate all my VMs here to, uh, to my EMEA data center temporarily so I can take this machine down, not lose my production connectivity, and, uh, and go ahead and, and follow through with, with that uh, maintenance and upgrading. So I would select the machine here. Again, another simple point and click option. Uh, live migration and and please select the best node possible. So you know it's it's gonna it's gonna automatically uh, determine the most eligible uh, Hyper-V host here to to receive that uh, live migration. Um, I've only got these two nodes here as part of my cluster, so it knows to go from node one to node two automatically. Uh, 